Hey everyone, I'm Alex, Alex Wallace. I'm the director of this show, Norna or the Witch's Curse. It's been a blast working together with my cast and crew, learning Zoom and how to take the big stage to a small screen. I thank you all for joining us tonight. I ask for your viewing pleasure to turn off your cameras, mute your mic, and make sure that you are in spotlight view. That's where you only see the person talking, not the Brady Bunch of other cameras. At this time, I'd also like to uh, talk about PRT's PayPal. It's palmreptheater at gmail.com, P-A-L-M-R-E-P, theater at gmail.com. Any donation is welcome, and you're just welcome to enjoy the show. That being said, I'm gonna go ahead and start the show. I'd like to introduce Norna or the Witch's Curse. Sister dearest, thy kindly offered aid is useless now. Uh, thou canst not help me, and I must add another sorrow to the many that are thine. Uh, I came to say farewell, Teresa. I grieve thee. I will tell thee all. Thy husband hates me, for I charged him with neglect and cruelty to thee, and he hath vowed revenge for my bold words. He hath whispered false tales to the king. He hath blighted all my hopes of rank and honor. I am banished from the land and must leave thee and Leonor and wander forth an outcast and alone. But let him beware. I shall return to take a deep revenge for thy wrongs and mine own. Nay, sister, grieve not thus. I have sworn to free thee from this his power, and I will keep my vow. Hope on and bear a little longer, dear Teresa, 
and ere long I will bear thee to a happy home. <coughs> what is that? Who comes? Is my lord returning from court? Fly, fly, thou art lost if he discovers thee. Heaven bless and watch above thee. Remember poor Teresa and farewell. Uh, 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 one more word of, of Leonor. I've, I've never told my love, uh, yet she has smiled on me and I should have won her hand. Uh, tell her this and bid her to be true to him who in his exile will hope on and yet return to claim the heart he had loved so faithfully. Uh, farewell, Teresa, my sister. Despair not, I shall return. Thank heaven he is safe. But oh, my husband, this last deed of thine is hard to bear. Oh, poor Louis, parted from his Leonor, his fair hopes blighted all by thy cruel hand. He comes, I, I must be calm. Oh, sleeping still? Hast thou no greeting for thy lord save tears and sighs? I'll send thee to a nunnery if thou art not more gay. I will gladly go, my lord. My heart is weary of this world and its gaieties, but make me more sad. <laughs> Nay, then I will send thee to a nunnery, and there, then I will send thee to the court, indeed. And there thou must be gay. But I am weary. Mm. Bring me wine and smile on me as thou used to do. Dost hear me? Weep no more. Huh? What is that? Tis none of mine. How came it hither? Answer, I command thee. I cannot, I must not, dare not tell thee. Darest thou refuse to answer? Speak! Who hath dared to venture hither? Is it thy brother? As thou lovest life, I bid thee speak. Oh, I am innocent. I will not betray the only one now left on this earth for me to love. Pardon me, my lord. I will obey in all but this. Thou shalt obey. I'll take thy life, but I will know. Thy brother must be near. This dagger was not here an hour ago. Thy terror hath betrayed him. Hmm? I leave thee now to bid them search the castle, but if I find him not, I shall return, and if thou wilt not, then confess, I'll find a way to make thee. Remember, I have vowed thy secret or thy life. Oh. Oh. I will gladly yield my life, but my secret never. Oh, Louis, I will gladly die for thee. Life hath no joy for me. And in the grave, this poor heart may find rest from the bitter sorrows it is burdened with. <laughs> that is in vain. He hath escaped. Theresa, rise and answer me. To whom belong the dagger I have found? Thy tears avail thee not, I will be obeyed. Kneel not to me, I will not pardon. Answer, or I swear I'll make thee dumb forever. Oh no, oh, I will not betray. Oh dear husband, please spare me. Let not the hand that led me to the altar be stained with blood I would so gladly shed for thee. I cannot answer thee. Then die! <laughs> Thy constancy is useless. I will find her brother and take a fearful vengeance yet. I am faithful to the last. Husband, I forgive thee. Ah! Tis done. 
and I am rid of her forever. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, but is an ugly deed. Poor fool. There was a time when I could pity thee, but thou hast stood twixt me and the Lady Leonor, and now I am free. <laughs> I must conceal the form, and none shall ever know the crime. Heaven shield us. What is this? His cruel hand hath done the deed, and I am powerless to save. Oh, poor murdered lady, I had hoped to spare thee this and lead thee to a happier home. Oh, perchance tis better, though. The dead find rest, and her sad heart shall ache no more. Oh, rest to thy soul, sweet lady. But as for thee, thou cruel villain, I have in store a deep revenge for all thy fearful deeds. If there be power in spell or charm, I'll conjure fearful dreams upon thy head. I'll follow wherever thou mayest go and haunt thy sleep with evil visions. I shall whisper strange words that shall appall thee. And I, and I shall haunt thy sleep with evil visions. Like a vengeful vul ghost, shall I haunt thee to thy grave. And thus, I shall revenge thy wrong, poor murdered lady. Beware, Rodolfo, old Norna's curse is on thee. Yes. Tis the spot, how dark and still. She's not here. Oh, Norna, mighty sorceress, I seek thy aid. I am here. Oh, I seek thee, Norna, to learn tidings of one most dear to me. Dost thou know aught of Count Rodolfo's wife? A strange tale hath, hath reached mine ears that many nights ago she disappeared, and none know whither she hath gone. Oh, tell me, is this true? It is most true. And canst thou tell me whither she hath gone? I will reward thee well. I can. She lies within her tomb in the chapel of the castle. <laughs> Dead? It, it cannot be. Uh, they told me she had fled away with some young lord who had won her love. Was it not true? Oh, it is false, as the villain's heart who framed the tale. I bore the murdered lady to her tomb and laid her there. Uh, but murdered? How? When? B by whom? Oh, tell me, I beseech thee. Oh, her husband's cruel hand took the life he had made a burden. I heard him swear it ere he dealt the blow. W where wherefore did he kill her? Oh, answer quickly, or I shall go mad with, with grief and hate. I can tell thee little. From my hiding place, I heard her vow never to confess whose dagger had been found in her apartment, and her jealous lord, in his wild anger, murdered her! It was mine. Oh, would, would it had been sheathed in mine own breast ere it had caused her so dark a deed? Oh, Teresa, why did I leave thee to so cruel a fate like this? Oh, young man, grieve not. It is too late to save. But there is left to thee a better thing than grief. Oh, what? Revenge! Thou art right. I'll, I'll weep no more. 
Give me thine aid, O mighty wizard, and I will serve thee well. Who art thou? The poor lady's lover? <laughs> no, no. Far nearer and far deeper was the love I bore her, for I am her brother. Oh, ha, ha, that's well. Thou wilt join me, for I have made a vow to rest not till that proud sinful lord has well atoned for this horrible crime. Spirits shall haunt him, and the darkest phantoms that my art can raise shall scare his soul. Wilt join me in my work? I will. But stay, thou hast spoken of spirits. Dread sorceress, is it within thy power to raise them up? Oh, it is. Wilt see my skill? Stand back, and I shall call up a phantom which thou canst not doubt. Come into my cave. O oh, spirit, from thy quiet tomb, I bid thee hither through the gloom. In winding sheet, with bloody brow, rise up and hear our solemn vow. I bid thee, with my magic power, tell the dark secret of that hour. When cruel hands with blood and strife close the sad dream of thy young life, hither, Appear before our eyes. Hail spirit, I command thee, rise! <laughs> <laughs> Shadowy spirit, I charge thee well, by my mystic art's most potent spell, to hunt throughout his sinful life the mortal who once called thee wife. At midnight hour, glide round his bed and lay a pale hand on his head. Whisper wild words in his sleeping ear and fill his heart with a deadly fear. Rise at his side in his gayest hour and his guilty soul shall feel thy power. Stand thou before him in day and night and cast o'er his life a darksome blight. For with all his power and sin and pride, ye shall ne'er forget his murdered bride. Hail, shadowy form, wilt thou obey? <laughs> <laughs> to thy ghostly work, away, away! Uh, the spell is o'er, the vow is won, and sinful heart, thy curse begun. Tis enough. I own thy power, and by the spirit of my murdered sister I have looked upon, I swear to aid thee in thy dark work. Oh, it is well, and I shall use my power to guard thee from the danger that surrounds thee. And now, farewell. Remember, thou hast sworn... They tell me that old Norna's cave is here among these rocks, and yet I find it not. By her I hope to learn of where young Count Louis is concealed. Once in my power, he shall not escape to whisper tales of evil deeds against me. Say, someone comes. I'll ask my way. Ho, oh, stand good, sir! Uh, I, I, uh... <coughs> <coughs> <clears throat> Canst guide me to the cell of Norna, the old sorceress? It were little use to tell thee thou wouldst only win a deeper curse than that which she hath already laid upon thee. Held! Who art thou that dare speak thus to Count Rodolfo? That thou canst never know. But this I tell thee. 
I am thy deadliest foe, and aided by the wizard Norna, seek to work thee evil, and bring down upon thy head the fearful doom thy sin deserves. Wouldst thou know more? Then seek the witch, and learn the hate she bears thee. Fool! Thinkest thou I fear thee, or thy enchantments? Draw and defend thyself. Thou shalt pay dearly for thine insolence to me. Insolence to me! <laughs> I will not stain my weapon with a murderer's blood. I leave thee to the fate that gathers round thee. Murderer, said he. I am betrayed, yet no one saw the crime. Yet, stay. Perchance twas he who bore Theresa away. He has escaped and will spread the tale. Nay, why should I fear? Courage! One blow when I am safe. <laughs> <laughs> oh, what's that? The death-like face. The wound my hand has made. Help! 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 I see no way save that. Were young Carol Louis dead, she would forget the love that had just begun, and by sweet words and gifts I may yet win her. The young lord must die. Mm. Ah! What is that? Tis nothing. Fire upon my fear. I I'll banish all remembrance of the fearful shape my fancy hath conjured up within the wood. I'll not do the deed myself. I have had enough of blood. You gave the bandit. He is just the man. Bow, sure of hand and secret. <laughs> I'll bribe, I will bribe him well, and when the deed is done, find means to bid, rid me of him, lest he play me false. I saw him in the courtyard as he entered, as I entered. Perchance he's not yet gone. Oh, oh, without there, uh, bid him go here if he be within the castle. Here's a rough name, but gold will make all sure. What would my lord with me? I ask a favor of thee. Nay, never fear. I'll pay thee well. Wouldst earn a few gold pieces? Hmm? <laughs> I, my lord, most gladly would I. Uh, nay, said good Hugo, here, here is wine. Uh, <laughs> drink and refresh thyself. Yes. <laughs> Thanks, my lord. How can I serve you? Dost thou know Count Louis, whom the king lately, hath lately banished? Nay, my lord, I never saw him. Ah, that is well. Uh, it, it matters not. Tis not of him I speak. Uh, take more wine, good Hugo. Go. <laughs> Thanks, Count. Listen. There is a uh, certain lord, one whom I hate. I seek his life. There is go. Thou hast the dagger and can use it well. <laughs> Dost understand me? Hmm? I, my lord, most clearly name the place and the hour, count out the gold. I and my dagger then are thine. Tis well. Now hearken. In the forest near Old Norna's cave, there is a quiet spot. Do thou go there tonight at sunset. Watch well, and when thou seest a, a, a tall figure wrapped in a dark cloak and mast, uh, spring forth and do the deed. Ah. <laughs> then fling the body down the rock, so hide it in some secret place. Here's one half the gold. Uh, more shall be thine once thou shalt show some token that the deed is done. 
Thanks, Count. I'll do thy bidding at sunset in the forest. I'll be there and see he leaves it not alive. Good evening then, my Count. Here go, use well thy dagger and go the way it's thee. Yet, <laughs> stay, I I'll meet thee in the wood and pay thee there. They might suspect if they should see thee here again so soon. I'll meet thee there and so, farewell. Adieu, my lord. Yes, all goes well. My rival dead and Leonor is mine. <laughs> oh. With her, I may forget that pale face that now seems ever looking in the mine. I, I can almost think the wound, deep wound shows in her picture yonder. <laughs> But, th but this is folly. <laughs> Shame on the Rodolfo. I'll think no more on it. <laughs> what is that? Am I going mad? Oh, see the eyes move. It is true this face. Nay, I will not look again. <laughs> yes, yes, is there. Oh, will this face say and face on me forever? Forever. Forever! Oh, fate, take me! Just a voice! If it's no dream, ah, let me go away! Away! Is the hour I bid him come with the letter for Lady Leonore. Oh, poor youth, his sister slain, his life in danger, and the lady of his love far from him. Tis a bitter fate, but if Norna lose not her power, he shall soon yet win his liberty, his love, and his revenge. <laughs> ah, he comes. Nay, tis the ruffian Hugo. I shall conceal myself. Some evil is afoot. This is the spot. Here I will hide and bide my time. <laughs> She's not here. No, oh, I'll I'll wait a while and think of Leonore. How will she receive this letter? Oh, could she know how, mid all my grief and danger, her dear face smiles on me and cheers me on. Oh, 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 villain, thou hast killed me. I am, I am dying. Oh, oh. God bless thee. Leonor! Oh. Norna! <gasps> Remember, vengeance on Rodolfo! <sighs> nay, nay, that will take no revenge. Thy days are ended thanks to this good steel. Now, for the token. Yes. This he cannot help. Ooh. And I'll take this. It's a costly ring. I'll throw the body in the thicket. Hmm. And my lord arrives. Just. <laughs> That'll be that. Not here. Can he have failed? Here is blood, it may be his. Here, I'll call. Here we go. Good, here we go. Art thou here? Hi, my lord. I am here. <sighs> All is safely done. The lovesick boy is over yonder in the thicket, and uh, <laughs> dead as steel can make him. <laughs> oh, here is the token, if you doubt me. 
uh, and uh, the ring I took from his hand. Uh, nay, nay, I do not doubt thee. Uh, give thou the ring. I am content with this. Uh, tell me, did he struggle with thee before when thou dealt the blow? Uh, nay, my lord, he fell without a groan, and murmuring something of revenge on thee, he died. Hast out the gold. Yes, yes, I, I have it. <laughs> and remember, I can take thy life as easily as thou hast it, if thou shalt whisper what hath been this day done. Now go, I've done with thee. And I with thee, adieu, my lord. <sighs> now am I safe. No mortal knows of Teresa's death by my hand, and Leonor is mine! <laughs> <laughs> Never! Never. <laughs> Curses on me! Am I bewitched? Surely I heard a voice. Perchance was but an echo. <laughs> oh, please take the water. I'll stay no longer. Oh, ah! she's there! Help! Help! shall hut thee, thou murderer. Another sin upon my soul, another life to be avenged. Oh, poor murdered youth, he hath gone to join his sister. I shall lay him by her side and then to my work. He hath raised another ghost to hunt him. Let him beware. Oh, how wearily the days go by. No tiding who Count Louis and Count Rudolfo urges on his suit so earnestly. I must accept his love. Or refuse and think no more of Louis. I know not how to choose. Rudolfo loves me. And I am an orphan and alone. And in his lovely home, I may be happy. But I have heard it whispered that he is both stern and cruel. Yet to me thinks it cannot be. <laughs> he's so tender when he's with me. Oh, how I could wish I could forget Count Louis. He hath never told of his love and doubtless thinks no more of her who treasures up his gentle words and cannot banish them even when another office is hot and home so few would refuse. How shall I answer Count Rudolfo when he comes? I do not love him as I should, and yet it were no hard task to learn from such fond a teacher. Shall I accept his love or reject? Reject! Reject! Oh, who art thou? Leave or I'll call for aid. Nay, lady, fear not. I come not to harm thee, but to save thee from a fate far worse than death. I am old Norna of the forest, and though they call me witch and sorceress, I am a woman yet, with a heart to pity and to love. I come to save thy youth and beauty from the blight I fear would fall upon thee. Save me? From what? How knowst thou I am in danger, and from what wouldst thou save me, Norna? Or Rodolfo, lady. Oh, and why him? Tell on, I'll listen to thee now. He hath offered me his heart and hand. Why should I not accept them, Nona? Oh, that heart is filled with dark and evil passion, and that hand <gasps> is stained with blood. No, what? Aye, well, mayest thou start. I'll tell thee more. The splendid home he would lead thee to is darkened by a fearful crime, and his fair palace haunted by the spirit of a murdered wife. Wife? 
Sayest thou? He has never told me he was wet. Oh, mysterious woman, tell me more. How does thou now know is true, and wherefore was it done? I have a right to know. Oh, speak and tell all. All for that have I come hither. He hath been wed to a lady, young and lovely as thyself. He kept her prisoner in his splendid hall, and by his neglect and cruelty he broke as warm and true a heart as ever beat in woman's breast. Her brother stole unseen to cheer and comfort her, and this aroused her lord's suspicions. He bid her yield to confess who was her unknown friend. She would not yield her brother to his hate, and he, in his wild anger, murdered her. No. Yes, I heard his cruel words, her prayers for mercy, and I stood beside the lifeless form and marked the blow his evil hand had given her. Then I vowed to avenge this death, and for this have I come hither, to warn thee of thy danger. He loves thee only for thy wealth, and when thou art his, he will wrong thee as he hath the meek Teresa. Oh, well, how shall I ever thank thee for this escape from sorrow? I did not love him, but I am alone, and his kind words were sweet and tender. We thought with him I might be happy yet, but how, how little could I dream of a sin like this? Thank heavens, tis not too late. How wilt thou answer Rodolfo now, lady? I will answer him with all the scorn and loathing that I feel. I fear him not. And he shall learn how his false vows are despised and his sins made known. Oh, it is well. But stay, be thou not too proud. Speak fairly and reject him courteously, for he will stop at not if thou in with his revenge, if thou but rouse his hatred. And now, farewell. I will watch over thee, and in thy hour of danger. Old Norna will be nigh. Oh, but stay. Give me thou a token by which thou wilt know the messenger that I may find cause to send thee. The fierce count will seek to win thee, and he and he will repay thee with scorn, with all the evil that his cruel heart can bring. Oh, take this ring, and I will trust whomever may send with it. I owe thee much, and. Believe me, I am grateful for thy care, and will repay thee by my confidence and truth. Farewell, old Norna. Watch thou above the helpless, and thine old age shall be made happy by my care. Oh, heaven bless thee, sweet lady. Good angels guard thee. Old Norna will not forget. Like a dream, so strange, so so terrible. He whom I thought so gentle and so true is is stained with fearful crimes. Poor murdered lady, if I escape a fate like thine, oh, I hear a step. No, heart, be firm, and he shall enter here no more. Sweet lady. I am here to learn my fate. I have told my love, and thou hast listened. I have asked thy hand, and thou hast not refused it. I have offered all that I possess, my home, my heart. Again, I lay them at thy feet, beloved Leonore. Oh, wilt thou but accept them poor, though they be? And in return, let me but claim this fair hand as mine own. Uh, my lord, forgive me, but I cannot grant it. When, when last we spoke, didst bid me ask my heart if it could love thee, it hath answered nay. I grieve I cannot make a, a fit re return for, for all that you offer. But I, I have no love to give, and without it this... Poor hand were worthless, and, and there are others far more fit to grace thy home than I, and 
go and, and win thyself a, a loving bride, and if so forget poor Leonore. What hath changed thee since, since last we met? Then wert thou kind and listened gladly, my love. Now there is a scornful smile upon thy lips and a proud light in thine eye. What means this? Why dost thou look so coldly on me, Leonore? Who has whispered false tales in thine ear? Believe them not. I am as true as heaven to thee. Then do not cast away the heart so truly thine. Thou art my first, last, only love. Tis false, my lord. Hast thou so soon forgotten Teresa? What? <laughs> Who told thee that, Cassidy? What dost thou mean, Leonore? I mean thy sinful deeds are known. Thou hast asked me why I will not wed thee, and I answer. I will not give my hand unto a murderer. Murderer? <laughs> no more of this. Thy tale is false. Forget it, and I will forgive thee afterwards. Now listen. I came hither to receive thy answer to my suit. Think ere thou decide. Thou art an orphan, unprotected and alone. I am powerful and great. Wilt thou take my love, and with it honour, wealth, happiness and ease, or my hate, which will surely follow thee and bring down desolation on thee and all thou lovest? Now choose my hatred or my love. My lord, I scorn thy love and defy thy hate. Work thy will, I fear thee not, and I am not so unprotected as thou thinkest. There are unseen friends around me who will save in every peril, and who are sworn to take revenge on thee for thy great sins. This is my answer. Henceforth, we are strangers. Now leave me, and I will be alone. Not yet, proud lady. If thou wilt not love, I'll make thee learn to fear the harp thou hast so scornfully cast away. Let thy friends guard thee well. Thou wilt need thy care when I begin my work of vengeance. Thou mayest smile, but thou shalt rue the day when Calvador for asked and was refused. But I will win thee yet, and then beware! <laughs> and when thou dost pray for mercy on thy knees, Remember the haughty words thou hast this day spoken. Do thy worst, murderer. Spirits will watch above me, and thou canst not harm. Adieu, my lord. Foiled again. Some demon works against me. Who could have told her of Teresa? A little longer, and I would have should have won a rich, young bride. And now this tale of Murder mars it all. But I will win her yet and wring her proud heart till she shall bend her haughty head and sue for mercy. How shall it be done? Ah, I see a way. The letter Louis would have sent her ere he died. She knows not of his death, and this. And I will send this paper bidding her to meet her lover in the forest. She cannot doubt the lines his own hands raised. She will obey, and I'll be there to lead her to my castle, and she may scorn, weep, and pray in vain. Ha <laughs> ha! Proud Leonor, spite of thy guardian spirits, thou shalt be mine. And then, for my revenge! Ha <laughs> ha ha! Revenge! <laughs> Tis strange, an unknown page thrust this into my hand while I was kneeling at the chapel. Oh, surely I should know this hand. Tis Louis, and at last he hath returned. It still remembers Leonor. <laughs> Dearest lady, I am banished from the land by Count Rudolfo's false tales to the king, and thus I dare not venture near thee. But, but by thy, thy love, love of my lips that never told, I do conjure thee to bestow one last look 
last word on him whose cruel fate it is to leave all that he most fondly loves. If thou wilt grant this prayer, meet me at twilight in the glen beside old Norna's cave. She will be there to guard thee, dearest Leonor, before we part, perchance forever, grant this last boon to one who in banishment, in grief, and peril is forever thy devoted Louis. He loves me, and mid danger still remembers. Ah, oh, Louis, there is nothing thou canst ask that I will not gladly grant. I will go. The sun is well nigh set, and I can steal away unseen to whisper hopes and comfort ere we part forever. Now, Count Rudolfo, thou hast given me another cause for hate. Louis, I can love thee, thou art banished and afar. Hark, tis a vesper bell. Now, courage and heart, and thou shalt mourn no longer. Norna's not here. Nor's Louis. Why comes he not? It surely tis the place. Norna? Louis? Art thou here? I am. Um. I am here, dear lady. Do not fear me. I may not unmask, for spies may still be near me, even to thee. Oh, oh, wilt thou pardon and still trust me, though thou canst not see how fondly I'm looking at thee? See, here is my ring, huh? my dagger. Oh, Leonor, do not doubt me. I, I do trust thee. Canst thou doubt it now? Oh, Louis, I feared thou wert dead. Why didst thou not tell me all before? And where wilt thou go? And, and, and how can I best serve thee? Not thou canst ask that my love shall leave undone. Hmm. Wilt thou let me guide thee to yonder tower? I fear to tell thee here. Old Nord is there waiting for thee. Come, love, for thy... For thy... Louis' sake. Uh, dare yet a little more, now I will tell thee how thou canst serve me. Wilt thou not put thy faith in me, Leonor? Uh, I, I will. Forgive me if I seem to fear thee, but... Thy voice sounds strangely hollow, and thine eyes look darkly on me from behind this mask. Thou wilt lay by once we are safe, and, and then I shall forget this foolish fear that that hangs upon me. Thine own hand shall remove it, love. Come, it is not far. Would I might guide thee thus through life. Come, dearest. Where art thou leading me, dear Louis? Thy hiding place is a pleasant one, but where's Norna? I thought she waited for us. She will be here soon. Ah, oh, how can I thank thee for this joyful hour? Leonor, I can forget all danger and all sorrow now. N nay, just... Let me cast aside this mournful mask. I, I long to look upon thy face once more. Wilt thou let me, Louis? I look upon me if thou wilt. Dost like it, lady. <laughs> <laughs> Tis useless. Thou now die to thy call. 
All here are my slaves and none dare disobey. Where are thy proud ones now? Hast thou no scornful smile for those white lips, no, no anger in those beseeching eyes? Where are thy friends? Why come they not to aid me? Said I not truly my revenge was sure? Oh, pardon and pity. See, I will kneel for thee and pray you, or weep if thou wilt only let me go. Forgive my careless words, oh, oh Count Rodolfo. Take, take me home, and, and I will forget this, this cruel jest. Ha, 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 ha. It is no jest, and thou hast no home but this. Didst thou not come willingly? I use no force, and all disguise is fair in love. <laughs> Nay, kneel nor to me. Did I not say thou wouldst bend thy proud head and sue for mercy, and I would deny it? Where is thy defiance now? I, I'll kneel no more to thee. The first wild fear is past, and thou shalt find me at thy feet no more. As I told thee then, I will tell thee now. Thine I will never be, and think not I will fail or falter at thy threats. Contempt of thee is too strong for fear. Not conquered yet. Time will teach thee to speak more courteously to thy master. Ah, thou mayst well look upon these baubles. They were thy lovers once. This ring was taken from his lifeless hand, this dagger from his bleeding breast as he lay within the forest whence I led thee. <laughs> this scroll I found next to his heart when it had ceased to beat. Oh, I lured thee hither with it and won my sweet revenge. <laughs> now rest thee, for when the castle clock strikes then, I shall come to lead thee to the altar. The priest is there. This ring shall wed thee. <laughs> Farewell, fair bride. Remember, there is no escape, and thou art mine forever. Never! I shall be free when thou mayest think how past forever. There is a friend to help and an arm to save, and earthly aid is lost. Thine I shall never be, and thou mayest seek. I shall be gone. Thou wilt need thy prayers. I shall return. Remember, when the clock strikes ten, I come to win my bride. <laughs> He has gone, and now for a few short hours of life are left for me. For if no other help shall come, death can save me from this fate I loathe. Oh, Louis, Louis, art thou gone forever? Lorna, where is thy promise to guard me? Is there no help? No tears, no prayers can melt that cruel heart, and I am in his power. Oh, what is that? His dagger taken from his dying breast. How gladly would he have drawn it forth to save his poor Leonore. Alas, his cold hand, cold forever. But I must be calm. He shall see how a, a weak woman's heart can, can still defy him and win liberty by death. It is the hour, the knell of my young life. Hark, they come. Louis, thy Leonore ere long will join thee, never more to part. <laughs> stay, lady. Stay thy hand. I come to save thee. Norna sends me. Uh, see, thy token. Uh, doubt not, nor delay. Another moment we are lost. Oh, fly, I do beseech thee. Oh, heaven bless thee. I will come, kind friend, and put helpless maidens trust in thee. Stay not. Away, away. Oh, okay.
Is my fab ride ready? Ha! Leonor, where art thou? Gone. Gone forever. Girl, mock me not. Come forth, I say. Thou shalt not escape me. Leonor, answer. Where is my bride? Here! Oh, why do I fear? She's there concealed. <laughs> ah, the fate! What is that? The spirit haunts me still! Forever. Forever. What hell? Without death! Beat down the door! Pedro! Carlos, let me come forth! Oh, they do not come! Nay, tis my fancy, I will, I will forget it all! Oh, still the door is fast! Leonor is gone! Hell groans so bitterly! Wild voices are sounding in the air! Ghastly faces are looking up on me as I turn! Unseen hands bar the door and Dead men are groaning in my ears. I'll not look, not listen. Tis some spell set on me. Let it pass. <laughs> the spell will not cease. The curse will not fly. And spirits shall haunt till the murderer shall die. <laughs> Again, spirit or demon, wherefore dost thou haunt me? What art thou? Ah! Ah! Am I gone mad? Unbar the door! Help! Help! Lie there, thou sinful wretch. Old Norna's curse ends but with thy life. <laughs> Danger seems thicking around me. Some secret spy is watching me unseen. I fear his Hugo, spite the girl I gave him and the vows he made. A higher bride may win the secret of him, and then I am undone. Pedro has told me that a stranger, cloaked and masked, was seen lurking near the castle on the night when Leonor so strangely vanished. <laughs> ha! What's that? Methought I heard that mocking laugh again. I am going fearful of the chance of that most awful night. Well, well, let it pass. If you go comes tonight, obedient to the message I have sent, I'll see he goes not hence alive. This cup shall be thy last, good Hugo. <laughs> he comes. And now... For my revenge. Oh, good Hugo. <laughs> oh, it's a fair with this since last we met. Uh, thou lookest weary. Uh, here is wine. Uh, sit and refresh thyself. I came not hither, Count Rodolfo, to seek wine, but, but gold. <laughs> Harky. I am poor, thou art rich, but in my power, for proud and noble, though thou art, the low-born Hugo can bring death and destruction upon thy head by whispering one word to the king. <laughs> now give me gold or I will betray thee. Thou bold villain, what means this? I paid thee well and thou didst vow to keep my secret. Threaten me not. Thou art in my power and shall never leave this room alive. I fear thee not. My menials are at hand. Yield thyself. Thou art fairly caught and cannot now escape me. <laughs> nay, nay. <laughs> not so fast, my lord. One blast upon my horn and my brave band concealed below will answer to my call. <laughs> Thou art caught, my lord. Thy life is in my hand, and thou must purchase it by hmm, 
50 gold pistoles paid down to me. <laughs> if not, I will charge thee. Yes, I will charge thee with the crime thou didst bribe me to perform <laughs> and thus win a rich reward. <laughs> Choose, thy life is not to me. Do oh, but listen here, go. I have no gold. Smile if thou wilt, but I am poor. This castle only is mine own. Out, and I am seeking now a rich young bride whose, whose wealth will hide my poverty. Be just, good Hugo, and forgive the harsh words I have spoken. Wait till I am ready, and I will pay thee well. That I will not. I'll have no more of thee, false lord. The king will well reward me. <laughs> thou wilt keep thy gold. <laughs> Farewell. <laughs> thou wilt see me once again. <laughs> stay, Hugo, stay. Give me but time. I may obtain the gold. Wait a little, and it shall be thine. Wilt thou not drink? Tis the wine thou likest so well. <laughs> Nay, I, I, I poured it ready for thee. I will serve myself. Wine of thy mixing would prove too strong for thee. Think quickly now. Uh, my good lord, I must be gone. Hmm? I'll wait no more. Tis growing late and I care not to meet the... Uh, spirits which I hear now haunt thy castle. Well, hast thou the gold? Not, <laughs> not yet, but if thou wilt wait. I tell thee I will not wait. I'll be deceived no longer. <laughs> thou art mine and I'll repay thy scornful words and sinful deeds by a prisoner's cell. <laughs> And so, adieu, my lord. <laughs> Escape is useless, for thou wilt be watched. <laughs> Hugo is the master now. <laughs> thou cunning villain. I'll out with thee yet, and I will disguise myself, and watch thee well. And when thou least thinkest it, my dagger shall be at thy breast. Ah, ah, ah. Now, one thing remains to me, and that is flight. I must leave all and go for poor, disordered, and alone. Sin on my head and fear in my heart. Will the sun never set? How slow the hours pass. In the first gloom of night, concealed in yonder old monk's robe, I, I, I'll silently glide forth and Fly from Hugo in this haunted castle. Courage, Rodolfo. Thou shalt yet win a name for thyself and fortune. Now let me rest a while. I, I shall need strength for the perils of the night. Poor fool. Thy greatest foe is here. Her thou shalt not escape. Hugo shall be warned and thou alone shalt fall. <laughs> ah! What fearful dreams are mine? Teresa, Louis, still they haunt me. Whither shall I turn? Who comes? <laughs> art thou another phantom sent to torture me? Tis I, leader of the king's brave guard, sent hither to arrest thee, my lord, for thou art charged with murder. Murder? Murder! Who cares to cast so fell a stain on Count Rodolfo's name? My lord, yield thyself. The king may show thee mercy yet. I will yield! Oh, all right and prove mine innocence, and clear mine honour to the king. Uh, uh, reach my, me my cloak yonder, uh, and I am ready. Oh, sure. Oof. He hath escaped. Oh, curse is on my cap.
here is this. How oh, there? Because around the castle, the prisoner has fled. We'll have him yet, the blood-stained villain. Dear lady, can I not do to while away the lonely hours? Uh, shall I go forth and, and bring thee flowers, or seek thy home to bear away thy bird, uh, thy loot, or aught that may beguile thy solitude? It grieves me that I, I can do so little for thee. Nay, tis I should grieve that I can find no way to show my gratitude to thee my brave deliverer. But wilt thou not tell me who thou art? I will fain to know who I owe my life and liberty. Nay, uh, that I may not tell thee. I've sworn a solemn vow, and till that's fulfilled, I, I may not cast aside this sorrowful disguise. Meanwhile, thou mayst call me uh, Adrian. <laughs> uh, wilt thou pardon and trust me still? Canst thou doubt in my faith in thee? Thou and old Norna are the only friends now left to poor Leonor. I put my whole heart's faith in thee. But if thou canst tell me of thyself, wilt thou tell me why thou hast come and done so much for thee, of a friendless maiden? I fear it will cause thee sorrow, dear lady, and thou hast grief enough already. I, I do not fear. I would so gladly know. Forgive me if I make thee weep. I had a friend, uh, most dear to me. He loved a gentle lady, uh, but ere he could tell her this, he died, and bid me vow to watch above her whom he loved and guard her with my life. I took the vow. That lady was thyself. And that friend, Count Louis. Louis, Louis, what hast thou feared to ask is buried with thee? Thou didst love him, lady. Love him? Most gladly would I lie down within my grave tonight. Could I but call back to life again? Grieve not. Uh, thou hast one friend who cannot change. A one who through joy and sorrow will find his truest happiness in serving thee. Hist, I, I hear a step. I will see who comes. Kind watchful friend, how truly do I trust thee? Conceal thyself, dear lady, uh, th with all speed. Tis Count Rodolfo. Let me lead thee into the inner cave. Uh, there thou wilt be safe. At last I am safe. Oh, no one will conceal me till I can find me to leave the land. Ha! Voices within there. Hell there, old wizard, hither! I have need of thee! What wouldst thou? Not get thee hence. I seek old Norna. Thou canst not see her. She's not here. Not here? Tis false. I heard a woman's voice within there. Let me pass. Tis not old Norna, and thou canst not pass. Ah, then, who might it be, most mysterious sir? The Lady Leonor. Ah, how came she hither? Uh, by my soul, thou liest. Stand back and let me go. She is mine. Thou canst only enter here above my lifeless body. Leonor is here, and I am her protector, and thy deadliest foe. Tis for thee to yield and leave this cell. No more of this. Thou hast escaped me once. Draw and defend thyself, if thou be hast the courage to meet a brave man's sword. But for Leonor, 
I would not stoop so low or stain my sword, but for her sake, I will dare all and fight thee to the last. Hey, at length, fate smiles upon me. I am the victor, and now for Leonor. <laughs> All dangers forgotten in, in the joy of winning my revenge on this proud girl. Thou art mine at last, Leonor, and mine forever. Oh, that is again. I will not fly. I do defy it. <laughs> oh, it is vain. I cannot. Dare not pass. It comes. Oh, it follows me. Oh, whither shall I fly? Oh, I've, I've saved her once again. Oh, but oh, this death-like faintness stealing over me. Robs me of my strength. Thou art safe, Leonor, and I am I'm content. They, they are gone. Oh, what has chanced? I heard his voice, and now tis still as death. Where is my friend? God grant he not be hurt. I'll venture forth and seek him. Oh, what is this? Adrian, kind friend, dost thou not hear me? There is blood upon his hand. Can he be dead? No, no! He breathes. He moves. Uh, no, th this mask, I will remove it. Surely he will forget him. Nay, nay, oh, oh, may not be. Uh, must not be. I am. I am better now. Uh, the, the blow, but but stunned me. Uh, it will pass away, and and the heart safe. I fear not for myself, but for thee. Oh, come, come, rest here. Thy wound is bleeding, and let me bind it with my kerchief, and and, and bring thee wine. Let me serve thee, who hath done so much for me. Art better now. Can I do aught else for thee? No more, dear lady. I think not of me. Listen while I tell thee of the dangers that surround thee. Count Rodolfo knows thou art here, and may return with men and arms to force thee hence. My single arm could, could avail not. Where, where can I then send thee? Where can I lead thee? No. No place can be too distant, no task too too hard, ain't no mountain high enough <clears throat> for him whose, whose joy it is to serve thee. Alas, I know not. I do not seek my home, O Count Rodolfo was my friend. My servants would be bribed that they would betray me, and thou wouldst not be there to save. Adrian. I have no friend but thee. Oh, pity and protect me. Most gladly will I, dearest lady. Thou canst never know the joy that confidence hath wakened in my heart. I will save and guard thee with my life. I will guide thee to a peaceful home where no danger can approach, and only friends surround thee. Thy Louis dwelt there once, and safely mayst thou rest till danger shall pass. Will this please thee? Oh, Adrian, thou kind, true friend, how can I tell my gratitude? And where find truer rest than in his home, where gentle memories of him will lighten grief? Then take me there, and I will prove my gratitude by woman's fondest friendship in my life's long trust. Thanks, dear lady. I need no other recompense than the joy it is in my power to give thee. I will watch faithfully above thee, and then, when thou dost needest me no more, I'll leave thee to happiness and 
thy gentle heart so well deserves. Now rest a while while I seek out old Morn and prepare all for our flight. The way we have to tread is long and weary. Rest thee, dear lady. Adieu, dear friend. I will await thee ready for our pilgrimage and think not that I shall fail or falter. Though the path be long and dangers gather around us, I shall not fear, for thou art will be there. God bless thee, Adrian. The weary bird mid stormy skies flies home to her quiet nest and mid the faithful one she loves find shelter and sweet rest. And thou, my heart, like tired bird, hath found a peaceful home where love's soft sunlight gently falls and sorrow cannot come. <sighs> Tis strange that. I can sing, but in this peaceful home, my sorrow seems to change to deep and quiet joy. Louis seems ever near, and Adrian's silent acts of tenderness beguile my solitary hours and daily grow more dear to me. He hath guard me day and night, seeking to meet my slightest wish and gather around me all that I hold most dear. Oh, and, and Angelica, what, what wouldst thou? My master bid me bring these flowers and crave thee to accept them, my good lady. Oh, bear him my thanks and, and tell him that his gifts are, are truly welcome. Oh, sure. Sure. These are the blossoms that he was gathering but now upon the balcony. He hath sent the sweetest and the fairest. Oh, but what is here? He hath never sent me aught like this before. <clears throat> Dearest lady, I am Don't banished pardon from- Pardon the bold words I hear addressed to thee, and forgive me, I grieve, one on whom I would bestow only the truest joy. In giving peace to thy heart, I've lost mine own. I was thy guide and comforter, and soon unknown to thee, thy lover. I love thee, Leonor, fondly and truly. And here I ask, wilt thou accept the offering of a heart that will forever cherish thee? If thou canst grant this blessed boon, fling from thy casement, a white rose I send thee, but if thou canst not accept my love, forgive me for vowing it, and drop the cypress bough I have twined about the rose. I will not pain thee to refuse in words, but mournful token is enough. Ask thine own heart if thou, who hast loved Louis, can feel aught save friendship for the unknown nameless stranger who through life and death is ever thy loving Adrian. Oh, how shall I reply to this? How blight a love so tender and so true. I have longed to show my gratitude and to prove how I have revered his noble friend. The hour has come when I may make his happiness and prove my trust. And yet my heart belongs to Louis. I cannot love another. Adrian was his friend. He loved him and, and confined him to me. 
nobly hath he fulfilled that trust, and where can I find a truer friendship than he who hath saved me from danger and death? and now gives me the power to gladden and to bless his life. Adrian, if thou wilt accept a sister's true friendship and love, they shall be thine. Louis, forgive me if I wrong thee, for though I yield my hand, my heart is thine forever. This rose, Adrian, to thee, but this mournful cypress shall be mine in memory of my blighted hopes. <sighs> See, he is waiting yonder by the fountain for the token that shall bring him joy or sorrow. Thou noble friend, thy brave true heart shall grieve no longer, for thus will Leonore repay the debt of gratitude she owes thee. Oh, 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 oh. Yes. He hath placed it in his bosom and is coming hither to pour forth his thanks for the poor gifts bestowed. I will tell him all. And if he will accept, then I am his. Dear lady, how can I tell thee the joy thou hast given me? Oh, this blessed flower from thy dear hand hath told thy pardon and consent. Oh, Leonor, canst thou love a nameless stranger who is so unworthy the great boon thou givest? Listen, Adrian, if thou dost thank me for a divided heart, thou hast been told of my love for Louis. He was thy friend, and, well, thou knowest how true and tender was the heart that he gave me. He hath gone, and with him rest my first deep love. Thou art my only friend and my protector. Thou hast won my gratitude and warmest friendship. I can offer thee a sister's pure affection. My hand is thine, and here I pledge thee that thou hast watched over me. So now thy happiness shall be my care, thy love, my pride and joy. Here's my hand. Wilt thou accept it, Adrian? I will. <clears throat> I will. I would not seek to banish from thy heart the silent love thou bearest, Louis. I am content if thou wilt trust me with thy happiness and give me the sweet right to guide and guard thee through the pilgrimage that is life. Oh, God bless thee, dearest. Dear Adrian, can I do not for thee? I have now won the right to cheer thy sorrows. Have faith in thy Leonore. Thou hast the right to know all, and ere long thou shalt. Uh, my mysterious vow will now soon be fulfilled, and then no doubt thou sh shalt part us. Uh, thou hast uh, placed thy trust in me, and I have not betrayed it. And now I, I ask a great boon of that confiding heart. Wilt thou consent to wed me ere I, I cast aside this mask forever? Uh, believe me, thou wilt not regret it. Uh, Tis part of my vow. One last trial, and I will prove to thee thou didst not trust in vain. For, for, forgive if I've asked too much. But, nay, nay, th thou canst not grant such a strange boon. I, I can. I, I will. I, I did but pause, for it seems strange that thou couldst not let me look upon thy face. But think not that I fear to grant thy wish. Thy heart is pure and noble, and that thou canst not mask, as I trust thee through my despair. So now I trust thee in my joy. Canst thou ask more, dear friend? Ever trust me thus? Oh, Leonor, how can I repay thee 
and my love, my life, are all I can give thee for the blessed gift thou hast bestowed. A time will come when all this, this mystery shall cease and we shall part no more. Now must I leave thee, dearest. Farewell. Soon I will return. I will strive to be a true and loving wife to thee, dear Adrian. For I have won a faithful friend in thee forever. Oh. It's like the hour hath come when I shall look upon the face of him who I this day have sworn to love and honor as a wife. I have perchance been rash in wedding one I know not, but will not cast a doubt on him who hath proved the noble heart that beats within his breast. I am his, and come what may, the vows I have made this day shall be unbroken. Oh, he comes, and now I shall gaze upon my husband's face. Dearest, fear not. Thou wilt not trust me less when thou hast looked upon the face so long concealed. My vow has ended. Thou art one. Thy hand is mine, Leonor. I claim thy heart. Oh, Louis! 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 Oh, oh dear husband! Tis, tis a blessed dream! No dream, Leonor. Tis, tis your Louis, a living Louis, who, who hath watched above thee and now claims thee for his own. Oh, dearest. I have tried thee too hardly. Pardon me. Oh, Louis, husband, I, I have not to pardon my life, my liberty, all, all I give to thee. I, how shall I repay thee? By banishing these tears, my love. Oh, and smiling on me as thou used to. On my way home. And you like the way she grew. Uh, most strange is to come sit beside me while I tell thee of my most strange tale, and no longer shalt thou wonder. Art happy now thy Adrian has cast aside his mask? Happy? What deeper joy can I desire than that of seeing the face of my dear friend once more? I... But tell me, Louis. Did... How couldst thou dwell so long beside me and, and not cheer my bitter sorrow when I grieved for thee? Ah, Leonor, uh, thou wouldst not grieve me if thou didst know how I struggled with my heart, lest I face some tender word, fond caress, should betray myself when thou didst grieve for me. Why didst thou fear to tell thy Leonor? And she would have aided and consoled thee, but why didst thou let me pine in sorrow at thy side? But then, when a word, it filled my heart with joy. Oh, dearest, I dared not. Thou knowest I was, was banished by that hate of that fiend Rodolfo. I had a fair and gentle sister whom he wed, and after cruelty and coldness that I dread to think of now, he murdered her. I sought old Norna's aid. She promised it, and, well, hath kept her word. When Count Rodolfo, the ruffian, left me dying there in the forest, she saved and brought me back to life. She bade me to make a solemn vow not to betray myself and to aid her in her dark vengeance of the murderer of Teresa. 
nor could I own my name and rank, lest it be, should be reached by the king who had banished me. The vow I took and fulfilled. And is there no danger now? Art thou safe from Count Rodolfo? Fear not, my love. He will never harm us more. His crimes are known. The king hath pardoned me. I have won thy hand. He is an outcast, and old Norna's spells have well driven him mad. My sister, thou art well avenged. Alas, alas, would it could I have saved and led her to this happy home. Oh, grieve not, Louis. Yes, she's happy now, and and, and thy Leonore will, will strive to, to fill her place. And and hast thou told me all? Nay, love. Nay. Thou knowest how I watched above thee, but thou canst never know the, ah, the joy, the faithful love for one though thou mourned as dead hath brought me. I longed to cast aside that dark disguise I had vowed to wear, but dared not while Rodolfo was at liberty. Now all is safe. I have tried thy love and found it true. Oh, may I prove most worthy of it. Oh, Louis, how can I love too faithfully the friend who midst his own grief and danger, loved and guarded me. I trust thee as Adrian, and I shall love thee as Louis until my death. And I shall prize it with all my heart. But trust me through doubt and mystery. Now, life is bright and beautiful before us, and may you never sorrow that thou gavest thy heart to Louis and thy hand to Adrian, the Black Mask. Who? Adrian, the, uh, uh, ne never mind. Black Mask? No, the, uh, never mind. Thy fate is sealed, thy course is run, and Norna's curse is well nigh done. <laughs> <laughs> Mine eyes are bewildered by the forms I've looked upon in sleep. Methought old Norna stood beside me whispering, evil spells calling, fearful phantoms that bear me hands. <sighs> Thy conscience gives thee little rest, my lord. Who's there? Stand back! I'll sell my life for stealing! Ah, tis no dream! I am fated! Where is my sword? In my safekeeping, Count Rodolfo, lest in thy rage thou mayst be tempted to add another murder to thy list of sins. <laughs> Didst thinkest thou could escape? Ah, oh, no. Although most swift of foot and secret, Hugo hath watched and followed thee. Yes, I swore to thee I would win both vengeance and gold, yes. The king hath offered high reward for thy poor head, and <laughs> it is mine. Yes. <laughs> Methinks it may cheer your solitude, my lord, so I came hither on my way to the captain of the guard to bear your death warrant. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> 
Hmm. Now, what wilt thou give me for this? Hark ye, were this destroyed? Thou mayst escape, and another were prepared. How dost thou like the plot? <laughs> and wilt thou save me, Hugo? Give me not of this king, I'll be thy slave. All I possess is thy, I'll give thee countless care. Ah, oh, pity, and save me, Hugo. <laughs> I did but jest. <laughs> Thinkest thou I would forego the joy of watching thy poor head laid low? <laughs> no. Where was thy countless gold when I did ask it of thee? <laughs> no. Mayst thou not tempt me from my vengeance. <laughs> Tis Hugo's turn to play the master now. <laughs> Mayst thou rest well, and so <laughs> good even, my lord. <gasps> oh, thus end my hopes of freedom. My life is drawing to a close, and all my sins seem rising up before me. The forms of my murdered victims laid before me there. Dying words ring in my ears. Leonor, praying for mercy at my feet. Eld, Nora, whispering curses on my soul. How oh, I am hardly betrayed. A oh, fool, fool that I have been. My pride, my passion, all, all and in the hills. Hated, friendless and alone, and the proud Count Rodolfo dies a villain's death. This dust, this dust. What's that? Who spoke? Ah, mine unknown foe. What wouldst thou hear? Thou didst bribe one Hugo to murder the young Count Louis whom thou didst hate. He did thy bidding, and thy victim fell. But Norna saved, and healed his wounds. She told him of his murdered sister's fate, and he hath joined her in her work of vengeance, and foiled thee in thy sinful plots. I saved Leonor, and guarded her till I had won her hand, and heart, and in her love find solace for the sorrow thou hast caused. Dost thou doubt the tale? Look on thine own unknown foe and find it true. Louis! Whom I hated and would kill! Thou, here, thou, husband of Lyra, happy and beloved, it is too much! Too much! If thou lovest life, if thou lovest life, depart! I'm going mad! I see wild phantoms whirling around me, voices whispering fearful words within my ear. Touch me not! There is blood upon my hands! Will this dream last forever? Oh. May heaven pity thee, Teresa, thou art avenged. Ah, uh, these are fearful memories for a dying hour. Sinful man, didst think thy deathbed could be peaceful? As they have haunted thee in life, so shall spirits darken thy last hour. I bore thy murdered wife to a quiet grave and raised the spirit to a fright and haunt thee. <laughs> I freed Lady Leonore. I mocked and haunted thee in palace, wood, and cell. I warned Hugo and betrayed thee to his power, and I brought this awful doom upon thee. <laughs> As thou didst refuse mercy to all thy victims, so shall mercy be denied to thee. 
remorse and dark despair shall wring thy heart, and thou shalt die unblessed, unpitied, unforgiven. Thy victims are avenged, and Norda's work is done. <laughs> Tis gone. Yet stay. Tis Louis ghost. How darkly his eyes shot on me. See. See the demons gather round me. How fast they come. Old oh, Norn is there, muttering his spells. Let me go free. Unbind these chains. Here we go. Louis. Leonor! Teresa! Thou art avenged! <clears throat> Thank you all so much for coming to our show. That was the end. Uh, I know we don't have a way to like do a blackout or applause or anything, but I really appreciate you all coming. This was such a fun experience. Um, right now, I'd like to take the time to introduce uh, our cast in our crew. Uh, first, in order of appearance, we have Lady Teresa as, or sorry, Brooklyn Bennington as Lady Teresa. Hello, everyone. And then we have Kevin Clark as Count Louie. Hello. We have Nathan Bohannon as Count Rodolfo. Hello. <laughs> Hi. We have Claire Duran as Norna. I'm not showing up. <laughs> <laughs> Then we have Katie Herbert as Lady Leonore. Not, that's not true. Well, that's not the order. I'm sorry. <laughs> I don't know my own show. <laughs> we have Verity Fletcher as Hugo the Bandit. Wow. <laughs> it's not showing up either. So. <laughs> now we have Katie Herbert as Lady Leonore. Hello. <laughs> And we have Courtney Unander as a dual role as, as Gasparina, Gasparina and Angelica. Hi. I want to make a special shout out to Courtney. She is also my co-director, stage manager, practically everything in this show. She has been wonderful throughout. And I really appreciate you all coming out to see this show. Um, this was a, a kind of fun project that we were all working on as a crew and cast. Uh, Zoom is a new boat for everybody, even for audience members. So I appreciate you all taking the time to, to uh, mute your mics, turn off your videos, all that stuff, just to enjoy theater once again. again. Um, I'd like to take the time once more just to uh, say that there is uh, a PayPal for Palmdale Repertory Theater, um, palmrep at gmail or sorry, palmreptheater at gmail.com. Um, feel free to donate. Um, we Love having you all here. This was a wonderful, wonderful show, and I thank you all. And with that, I wish you all good night. Thank you so much, and we'll see you at the next show.